Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the Wicked Gamer and Collector. <laughs> it's a time for a package from China. And that's also why I wanted to make this top five weird game consoles. Think to all those like crazy packages from AliExpress. Man, we have seen a lot of weird crappy products, but also weird ones. And I wanted to focus on the weird ones today. So that is what we're going to do in this new video. We're starting off with the number five, the K20 game box. Yeah, so when it comes to naming and the call, actually everything game box nowadays on AliExpress, or it feels like that. So when you're looking at this particular motor, it was more like in the weird hybrid thing. Like I, it was not an handheld, but it was also a game console they can plug into your television. It was so weird. That was absolutely one of those, like, say, fascinating products that I think that absolutely deserves a spot in this weird, like, top five. All right, so let's open it up. Ooh. Okay, so what I really find interesting with this is, like, if you, this is basically what you're going to get. So you're thinking this is going to be your typical multi-game card, but it is your typical multi-game card, or what it is. It's a quite interesting one. So this is basically like a display behind it. <laughs> so you need to peel this off. So it, it's kind of funny, you know, like it always weighs quite heavy, but the interesting way is like this thing will need like a battery. Let's see if it comes with the battery. So it's like convenient. Ah, there we have him, the BL5C. This is the Nokia old school battery. So I find it a little bit of bummer. I need to peel off the sticker, but this is like pure nostalgia. Like Famicom games are basically like, like of the Famicom multi card games are so cool to see it like this way. All right, so let's peel it off, I guess. Uh, let's try it from a different angle. All right, so there was more like a kind of a protection. All right, here we go. And here we have the system itself. I'm going to I'm going to save this sticker because I think it's pretty cool. Okay, I kind of was no, I was saying like put it on the back is not a good idea. All right, so let's put the battery in. Uh, let's basically. Let's see if it's going to be powering on. Let's smell it. Mm, it smells nice. Smell it doesn't smell chemical whatsoever. We've got like plastic buttons like the start. Normally we have like a rubberized. But that's it. Like, let's hook it all up. Let's charge it all up. The downside to this is there's only, let's see, inside a very short cable. Like, what the hell do I suppose they need to do with this? And then we have like an AV out cable. Kind of funny is like, Normally you have like these plug and play handhelds that just have like a display and an AV out, but that's basically what I get. I was hoping this thing was more like a piece of plastic than that was like a docking station. That would be cool, but no, it is just a piece of plastic that you need to click in here. And that's it. <laughs> it doesn't even like stay in its position. All right, so quite interesting. I think you can just put it on here like a system and you can just play your games like this. Yeah, so it's going to be our typical like multi-game card. The Towns to One is absolutely in lie. We're going to get a lot of double games. We do have like a lot of familiar titles. I'm gonna be surprised that we're also going to get a lot of doubles. What I hate about these things that we're not going to get, let's say, in good, let's say, alphabetic order. We'll give you like a quick overview of everything. Well, let's boot up a first game. No. No, no, wait, let's, let's go farther. I just want to see if we can find the same games again. Pinball 2. Zippy Rays. Pinball 2, it's actually Pinball 2. Okay, the bottom mapping is completely weird. Huh, what? That goes great. You can hear that all the sound effects are here. Okay. I love to check out those weird games. Small dinosaur. Okay. Let's crank up the volume. Oh yeah, this actually like this weird homebrew games. Do have like a shitload of screen tearing. But let's plug it into the television just to see if we do have still have the same issues. All right, so when basically like plugging in the AV out cable, it will automatically go through the big screen, and I can tell you the signal output on this thing is absolutely horrible. 
All right, so let's continue and let's see how it plays. Let's see if we do have like some screen tearing now. It's just the screen tearing is basically the problem of the handheld or the mini device itself. I find a little bit of a bummer that this freaking thing has such a bad, let's say, video output. I can tell you, I've seen my share of video outputs that are pretty damn bad, but this is absolutely the king of them. So where this thing is such a weird construction, uh, this thing just needed a spot in the top five because it's not a handheld, it's actually a game console or you can just, you know, it makes no sense this thing. So this games power weird thing going box absolutely deserves a spot in this wicked weird top 10 AliExpress devices. Yep. So we have seen all kinds of naming when it comes to game consoles or game boxes. This is just the nostalgia game box. But yeah, not only the name was not nostalgia, it was the system itself. I know what they're going with this, particularly looking at the case and the way how it looks or shaped with colors. This needs to be in a little bit of a nostalgia vibe, but yeah, this had nothing to do with like saying any or Famicom whatsoever. Never, this is actually like another weird device from China and the overall performance is also that great. So let's do a quick overview about this. Okay, so you can see like when you compare it with my hands, this thing is really tiny. So the weird thing is like there is no on or off switch. This doesn't do anything. So at the back, we're going to get two USB connections, an HDMI out. We have here the TF card and then we're going to get the uh, micro SD that is basically with only 32 gigabyte over here. So that's it, an original SanDisk, or I think it's an original one, and the micro USB. And with this, we can basically connect it with a 5 volt power supply. Right now, like rubbery feed on it, here it says already like needs 5 volt 1 amp. So that is not a lot, but so far I can see there is no, yeah, there's absolutely like no on and off switch. So that's a little bit of bummer and weird. But when the system has been booted up, what you're going to get is one big gigantic pile of a list. A little bit of a bummer because same with the, with let's say the first generation of Pandora's boxes. So pressing the R button, here we're going to see like an overview of all the system that we can play with this. So quite a, let's say, big compatibility. Arcade, Famicom, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, PlayStation, New Geo, Mega Drive, Game Gear, Game Boy Color. And if you're going to basically going over here, you're going to even have like Super Famicom. It's not my favorite controller, I can say that, but and overall, it's not bad. So when it comes to the controller, they're actually giving to give you like a very, very nice one. Good connection, no input like in my opinion, and the D-pad is very good. The system itself is running RetroArch on the background, and this is what you're going to get when pressing select and start when we boot it up again. So here you can see like we have some option with RetroArch. So far I can see I cannot get into the big menu where we can maybe change out emulator, stuff like that. Yeah, so this is what you're going to see. We can quick load, quick save, change the inputs. So there are a lot of things you can change out. So that's very good. But you need to go every time to this menu, start, quick RetroArch, and then you can go back to this main menu. Okay, the first game I wanted to try is Super Famicom. So when I was going through the menu, I already noticed some lag here and there, especially in the audio. So I can just hear some crackling noise. I know that is not actually like the speaker is going down. No, this is absolutely like an emulation issue. Still, the frame rate of the gameplay is quite good. But let's be honest, like nowadays we can play so many of these games. But slowdowns in this game is absolutely unforgivable, especially with the 16-bit stuff. Next up, let's try Sega Mega Drive. And it seems to be that they map the buttons quite strange. That's of course because we're using a PlayStation controller for actually like normally having like a three or six button controller. But so I can see and hear this works very damn good. Oh, love the shield. Okay, so next up, let's try PlayStation 1. PlayStation 1, I noticed with some part of the game, it still struggles. So, PlayStation 1 is not like a very good thing to play on this. I can already tell you that. So actually, a lot of parts of the game plays very well. I still notice some hiccups here and there. Something I find quite unforgivable when it comes to this. The D-pad and the analog stick seem to be working fine. 
All right, so next up, let's try another game. This is Wipeout, but still I'm getting this feeling the game is stuttering here and there. I don't know if it's noticeable on the camera, but I find it's not having like a very smooth experience when it comes to playing PlayStation 1 on this. I wouldn't be surprised that the system they are selling that is just basically like a really low powered piece of hardware. Nevertheless, it was an absolutely weird looking like device and not a great experience. The overall menu feels kind of clunky and I mean, particularly when you're looking at the way how it works. Yeah, the Nostalgia game box is absolutely deserving a number four position over here. It did have the option to play more than only 8-bit games, but the way how it looks and the PlayStation controller, you know, oh man, is the same shenanigans that we have seen many times before. Alright, so for the number 3, I have put the Magic Cube here. And the reason why, because this is a very tiny box. It's similar to, let's say, a mini PC that I've seen a couple of times now. But this is not a mini PC at all. It's a completely custom-made device and it even came with a built-in speaker. The overall performance, yeah, it's the same weird shenanigans like the other ones that we have seen before. It did have the option to play more than only 8-bit again. But still, the way how they construct this and the overall performance... Yeah, and they also released, by the way, two different versions of it. So the first model was absolutely horrible, nothing did run great on it, and this newer version was slightly improved. The Magic Cube, and I can say this thing is very tiny, compared to all the game boxes I've seen. But there is thing, one thing that is very interesting. So let's be clear about the one thing. This thing is not more like an Android box they slapped into a casing. We do see that very often now in 2021. Yeah, sometimes like the Super Console are very creative with it, but this time they made something completely unique. And what is really unique, this thing comes even with a built-in speaker. Yeah, it's quite interesting and this concept, I've never seen it before like this. We're having two USB ports, we're having a volume control yep, for the system and the internal speaker. The other side, we're going to get the Type-C for connection for giving this thing some juice, an HDMI out. But this is not our typical cable, this is an HDMI mini if I'm saying correctly. The ECF card is over here and an on and off switch. So there's not a lot to talk about, nevertheless. Let's take a close look at the system and how does it play. I'm going to get the main menu look very similar. I'm guessing this device is based on Linux, like some of these handhelds I've reviewed in the past. So as you already can see over here, we have a game, movies, music, theme, history, file, image and settings. So let's do a quick throw through the menu because maybe this can be very interesting to see we're having something, for example, with XPS ratio. So, but first, let's take a close look at the game section. As you can see, it's more like the similar stuff we're going to get with these fake China handhelds and also with the consoles from 8-bit up to all the way up to PlayStation 1. It is possible that it's going to be running perfectly. That's going to try out a little bit later in the video. So let's go back. Movie, music, theme. I'm guessing you can change out the background. Yep, like always. Files, the files that you're like browsing through the files itself. History, this is more like if you want to check out what games you've played before. Images, which pretty pictures. Language, let's see if it, yep, and it still got the typo of the English. So we're still having, yep, equal proportion. So let's put it on this way. With the display, this is the same like with handhelds. We have full screen or white, and we're having the 4x3 space ratio. And this thing has an open speaker, so let's put it on the so, Because I'm just very curious what we're going to get. Handle selection. So here we have some other options. Connection, handle computer. It was all fun and game that this device came with a built-in speaker. But the unfortunate part is, is that it is absolutely not a great experience. This has to do that some of the systems have not a great overall emulation performance. And we also suffer from this horrible controller that makes most of the games unplayable. And please don't even start talking about, like say, the internal speaker, because that thing does sound okay. It's absolutely a nightmare when it comes to the output of the HDMI and switching between the internal speaker. Man, it's a one hot mess when it comes to that. Where I love this tiny box, it's quite unfortunate that it comes with so many problems. Limited controller support, a locked system, so you cannot even mess with the emulators. Uh, and overall, it's just absolutely one hot mess. And that's kind of a bummer, because it had a lot of potential. The Super Retro Castle is on my number 2 position. And this has to do, because this is not all that bad, it's also known as a mini Apple Pippin, if I'm saying it correctly. I'm always messing up that name, I'm just going to be honest with that. But the overall quality of the case was quite nice. 
on the back end and runs on retro arc that couldn't be modified and be missing around in it deep diving trying to see if we can unlock anything so we can add more emulators this product was clearly not made for the european or us market because everything is just in japanese or at least what i think it is so that is absolutely one of those interesting things that you can just pick it up it was by the way very expensive on aliexpress and so far i know you cannot find anymore it was like one single seller having this and from china and they were selling this and when it was sold out i have never seen it before but still needed to deserve a number two position and the overall quality it goes in a very nice way to it and when you're looking at all the functionalities it's quite interesting so one of the first things i was quite surprised by there was no sd card inside of this thing so i'm guessing you can even add some new games only an HDMI and input for the power supply and at the front are having two USB ports for the controllers and over here are finding the menu button and the on off switch another thing that was not common when you're looking at all the other let's say game boxes okay so when it comes to the power supply there is no power supply at all then we're going to have ourselves the barrel jack to USB and this is because this thing uses 5 volts so getting a normal let's say in charger not a fast charger by the way Two controllers and the controllers were like Super Nintendo clones and I was quite surprised overall the quality itself. It almost, it almost comes close to the original. There are a couple of things that are quite different. For example the ABXY buttons are different. They also switch it around or at least <laughs> I'm not used to this configuration. Or is it the same like a Super Nintendo? I don't know man. I have a brain fart at the moment. But it doesn't even matter. The RetroCast Super RetroCast controllers. Two of them, the D-pad, what I find quite interesting, I think that they have a nice curve to it, but also the feel and a very long travel, but the shoulder buttons feel almost authentic to the original controllers. It's kind of interesting, and yeah, the configuration of this device, I think that's one of the reasons why I find it such a cool thing. So let's plug it in and let's take a close look at it. But let's do a quick teardown, and yeah, you know what's kind of funny, that they, in a, they added a very piece of metal. But this is not like the cheap way what they did with these, let's say, arcade stick back in the day to give it an extra weight. No, it actually does have a purpose. To begin with, you can see there's a thermal paste on top, and the reason why that this thing is going to be connected to the mainboard itself. Yep, this is actually just one of the passive cooling things. And it's kind of cool to be honest because when you're looking at this device yeah the cooling especially when it comes to other main boards that we have seen before has no cooling whatsoever so when it comes to the chipset that is also a very interesting one this thing is called the s905 xam logic and this particular chip has been used in the super console x let's say devices and i don't know exactly how much ram but i'm guessing it's going to be something like one or maybe two gigabytes and when you're looking at this main board the normal, let's say, S905 main boards, or at least this particular series, can just run PlayStation 1 if you uh, if they want to. So it's a quite interesting configuration, and they were quite early when you're looking at, let's say, the competition of all the game boxes that are out there. So the Retropedia SRF1, that's the only thing. But again, yeah, if I can find an updated version, that, that would be really cool. But at this point, I think there is no updated version coming out whatsoever. So what is actually interesting with this product, if you're going to be booting it up, it's just actually booting straight into RetroArch. It will show Retropedia, but there is no, let's say, indication that this is just actually an Android box in the inside. So the menu is completely in a different language than English. Um, I have no idea for what kind of market it was actually for. But I can navigate through the menu itself. You're having just a basic RetroArch menu. Um, so far I can see there is no option of getting into, let's say some extra options would be cool. For example, if you can mess around with emulators or add new games. So what kind of stuff can we actually play? We have arcade games. We have even the PC Engine, PC Engine CD. We have the PC Engine Super Graphics, the Family Edition or, NES, or the Family Computer Disk System. And here having the NES, Super NES, Mega Drive, the Sega Master System Mark number 3, the Sega Genesis and Sega CD are on here with all kinds of different options. Then of course the SG-1000 and also PlayStation 1. And this chip is actually capable of running it. So I'm quite interested to see what can we actually do. So let's do a quick gameplay overview and let's check out how the overall emulation performance is. Pressing the menu button will give you actually the menu inside of the game. 
So here we can restart the system, go out of it, or make a quick load, quick save. The unfortunate thing is there was not a lot of stuff to actually like check out or mess around with emulators. Everything has been locked down. For example, if you want to go back or check out a different menu, nothing works over here. Pressing this button will reboot and we'll go back to the main menu itself. But in the end, when you're looking at, let's say, all of the, let's say, 8-bit stuff, 16-bit, this runs just perfectly on an S905 chip that is inside of this machine. And it is absolutely one of those very cool features of this. And I can tell you, the overall experience with this device is quite nice in combination with the controllers. The controls don't feel like 100% authentic to the original, like the Super NES, but they overall, let's say, respond quite well when it comes to, let's say, the movement of the character in the game. Okay, next up, let's try one of my Super NES games I've played back in the day a lot, and that is Desert Strike. I love, the, by the way, the intro of this game. The problem when we're getting with a bad D-pad that we cannot really navigate through the stage. I already mentioned before that the D-pad has a very long travel, and you do really notice it when actually me navigating the helicopter through the stage itself. But the overall experience is quite good, and the emulation part, yeah, just here for yourself. But okay, so when it comes to the retro quest, this thing absolutely deserves a number two because it's not a bad product. It's unfortunate that it's locked, so what you see is what you're getting. And of course, the price, I think I paid over $150 for it. It's way too much, especially now with all of the competition. But it's absolutely a very cool looking box that deserves a number two position, or at least a spot in this top five of the weird game boxes from AliExpress. And for the number one position, I'm choosing this TV game box. In other words, Android Game Box or the Senpao. And the reason is very simple. This is like a multi-purpose device. It comes with built-in Android. You can even install Ami Alec or make this thing an emulation beast or connect something on the device. Think about a PlayStation 5, PC, Sega Super NES or NES Mini. You can do a lot of cool things with it. Okay guys, so this is what you're going to get inside the package. We're going to get a very cheap 9 volt power supply for not charging, but there's, there's no battery inside the machine. This is just for powering it on. Of course, we're going to get a controller because this is an Android device. What I do like about it, the receiver is inside the machine, so you don't need to have a separate dongle for this. Then we're having the toilet paper manual deluxe, and it's only in, yeah, in the Asian language. There's nothing... Nope, there is no English, but I guess you a quick explanation how to work, but I will show you in this video how it works. But let's take a close look at the Senpao itself, because this thing is quite interesting and how, how good is this thing actually? So let's take a close look at it. But first, pure satisfaction. Okay, so when you're looking at the device, how is the quality in general? It's okay. And the reason why I say it's okay, so to first of all, I just want to point out there's no CRT inside, it's just an LCD display. But the device itself is fully made of plastic and there are no metal parts like the buttons in front of the television. So again, it's a full plastic fantastic. But it is not that plastic fantastic that it is super lightweighted. In total, it weighs 332 grams. So it's not a lot, but it's more than even, let's say, than a Super Console X that was around 250 grams. So let's talk about the LCD display that is inside this machine. It's a 3.5 inch LCD display, but an IPS. I can see it even from an angle. It looks amazing. And that is a very positive thing with the Sampo mini television. That even comes with a very nice LCD display and some awesome features. Okay guys, so at the back of the system we're going to get two additional USB ports that we can use for a controller or an external storage. We're going to get the input for the CF card, the input for the power, and of course we're having here the two switches. And the switch is quite interesting. So when you flip them both up, I think you can hear it, but there is a fan inside this machine. It will turn on and basically what you're going to get is the system will basically boot up in the Android version. And every time when you're going to boot up in the TV box mode, you're going to get the intro specially made for this device. 
Every time you're turning it on, it's more like it doesn't get any signal. I think it's just more like a finishing touch to this machine that makes it even pretty cool. So as you can see, it boot up really quick and it's going to get, of course, the older Android menu because this is Android number seven. I just wanted to give you a quick look of the remote. The remote works very well and, and that is something that I'm very pleased to see because you're going to need it, of course, with the Android menu. Sadly, there's not an Air remote. It's just a really cheap remote. It works, but not the biggest fan of it. So at the front of the device, we're going to get two functional buttons. The top one is basically what you can do is going into black and white mode. Like I already did a video on my second channel playing Cuphead. It's a really cool gimmick. It's just more like an extra thing you can do with it. And the bottom one is a volume control. So I'm very pleased to put them over here so you can just quickly put them on a different volume if you need it. And this button feels quite nice. Like I always want to say, it's a very nice. On the top we're going to find one speaker. I must say I am not super happy with it. It's okay, but I want to have for the price range what this thing costs a way better speaker. Give me two for better stereo sound. All right, so there is one thing I just need to point out. And you maybe already noticed that I didn't talk about the HDMI port. And the reason why, because this is quite interesting. So normally you would say, maybe you can use this thing like a game system, plug in two controllers, HDMI function, and let it go. But no, it's just the opposite. So what you need to do with here two switches. The first one is turning the system on and off. When you're going to leave the second switch in the top position, we're going to get the Android function. If we're going to put him in the bottom function, we're going to get the HDMI input one function. So now we're going to get the TJ800 logo. And when we're going to turn in in the different position, you can see it says HDMI function number one, and we're ready to put in a device itself. So when the both of the switches are in this position, the only thing that we need to do is plug in an HDMI cable, and we can basically play games on the mini television. Yep. And so let's do a little bit of a gameplay and chit chatting about this. It can't get more wicked than this. So if you're looking closely, you can see that we're having two black bars at the bottom and the top. And that was some of this game because we're not having the perfect matching resolution when it comes to the internal LCD in combination with the games. So that's something you're going to get. So let's move on to another game with a perfect resolution so it will fill up the full screen. Okay, so in the next part, I just wanted to play some games and I'm going to use my Xbox 360 controller for it because this thing is super compatible with a lot of these devices, including the Senpao. So maybe you're ever running noticing that I preloaded some different emulators on it. You can get them from the Play Store. Take consideration, some are free, some you need to pay for them. But it's pretty cool. And yeah, I think it's to give this thing a completely new way to play. But okay, let's go on with it and let's play some games. To the old stuff, 8-bit, 16-bit, the Senpao have no problem running these things. So it's quite interesting. So let's go to the high-end stuff and let's see how it will handle this. Okay, so this thing is pretty cool and it's absolutely the weirdest device out there that is actually an Android box or a game system inside a mini TV. This thing makes no sense whatsoever because you cannot even connect the mini TV to your television. Nevertheless, I want to thank you all for watching. I hope you really enjoyed this top 5 video of the Way product from AliExpress and it would be great to see you in the next video.